avis à tous les Guinéens qui nous écoutent, oui, oui, à tous les Guinéens qui nous écoutent, le Rwanda appartient à ceux qui le défendent vraiment. Et vous, les Guinéens, vous n'êtes pas des Rwandais. What you're hearing over here is the radio that Rwandans will hear on a daily basis. The term cockroach was used to dehumanize the Tutsis and the radio was the Hutu government's biggest tool to incite hate. I'm Mijahid Durmas and I'm here in Kigali on the 25th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide. We will speak to the people and find out how European colonizers created the foundation for one of the worst atrocities in the history of mankind that took place right here in Rwanda. When Rwanda fell into the hands of Belgium after the First World War, they deliberately instrumentalized ethnicity to strengthen their hand and gain total control over the country. Tension and division was created among the majority Hutus and Tutsi minorities. As part of Belgium's divide and rule strategy, they adopted policies based on a play of power. First, they supported the Tutsi monarchy and assigned local chiefs to be Tutsis. But after the country gained its independence, the Hutus were given prominent roles within the government. The Belgian rule also forced locals to identify themselves by the tribes that they belonged to, and they distinguished the population by their physical features, the shape of their nose, the size of their eyes, and height. The growing hate created between the two sides led to the next 30 years to pass amid violence and bloodshed causing a massive flow of refugees into neighboring countries. By the mid-1960s, thousands were killed and more than half of the Tutsi population was said to have fled Rwanda, while the Hutus continued to consolidate power. Meanwhile, the other formal colonial powers also began exercising influence in the country, specifically France. So let's just stop for a moment to understand what was going on in post-colonial Rwanda. The Belgium colonization of the country created a socio-political elite who spoke French and adopted the French culture. Taking advantage of this, France became a dominant power within the country. Meanwhile, the Tutsi refugees in Uganda embraced the English language and culture. This is why the Hutu-led government considered Tutsis as an anglophone threat to their francophone rule and they heavily relied on the French support to guarantee their sovereignty. The ongoing discrimination against the Tutsi refugees pushed them to establish the Rwandan Patriotic Front. And in 1990, under the leadership of Paul Kagame, they entered Rwanda. Threatened by the presence of RPF, the French-backed Rwandan government desperately called for help. In response, France sent troops on a short-term humanitarian mission, but they ended up staying there for three long years. France trained and equipped the Rwandan government army. It was the same army that will be the vanguard in the genocidal campaign against the Tutsis. So the France, not did they, did they uh, supply the arms only, but they came physically to Rwanda. The Belgians came physically to Rwanda and they went to the war field. On April 6, 1994, the Hutu president Juvenal Habirmana was assassinated when his plan was shut down with surface to air missiles. This is when the brutal killings of innocent civilians began. Just imagine, around 2,000 people were killed in this church alone. At a time when international support was needed more than ever, the Belgium-backed UN peacekeeping mission established to prevent civil war, reduced their foothold by almost 90% to just 270 men. Humanitarian agencies estimate that around 100,000 people were killed throughout Rwanda just in the first two weeks. Three months into the genocide, French government announced Operation Turquoise, the aim was to establish a safe zone to help rescue civilians. But witnesses say the French mission failed. So this is Visacera in Western Rwanda where the controversial Operation Turquoise was held by France. More than 50,000 people were killed here 
under the watch of French troops. Instead of protecting the people who are being killed, who, who are the Tutsis, they came and protected the government which was in place, and they came and protected the Inherame militias who are killing the people. Kurero tumaze kubasobanurira baratubwiye bati nibyo koko tuje kubatabara ariko ntitwiteguye naratubwiye ngo dukomeze twihishe nkuko twihishaga muri yo minsi tatu rero niho intera hamwe zakajeje mu rego zica abagore n'abana ku musozi ikagari ikindi cyagaragaraga nuko abasirikari bo muri leta y'abatabazi bahungaga baciye muri zone turukwaze na hano mu bisesero barabarekaga bagatambuka kandi bazi ibyo bakoze muri genocide the failure to protect the Tutsis from genocide not only played out on the ground in Rwanda, but also at the UN headquarters, where several cables were ignored. An example of this can be seen in the cable sent by General Romeo Dallaire, who led to the UN peacekeeping mission at the time. Aggressive actions have been taken against the particular ethnic groups, against the general civilian population, and against UNAMIR which has resulted in fatal and non-fatal casualties. If we send it to the security community, I mean to the Security Council of the UN, this means the, the big five knew it. All of them knew that something bad may happen in Rwanda. But they are busy. Representatives of the Western world will once again come here to Kigali on the 25th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide. With roses in their hands, they will pay tribute to the hundreds of thousands of innocent lives that lost just in a hundred days. I cannot help but wonder, will the world leaders accept that their failures to act quickly and decisively could have saved the lives of Rwandans? <laughs>